Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, welcome back to another episode of Bad Beast Barbecue. And today is a special day because the, today is September 3rd and today is my birthday. That's right. I've been blessed to be on this earth for 56 years and hopefully the Lord will continue to bless me to hang around just a little bit while longer, okay? So today what we're going to be doing uh, for my birthday, I didn't want anything special. I thought about a tomahawk steak and I thought about some ribs and that, that sort of thing. But what I'm going to do is I have found me a boneless pork butt here that's uh, been kind of filleted out. The butcher took the bone out and they kind of left it flail open. And so we are going to make a coffee rubbed um, pork butt today. And we're going to be cooking it on the Rectech 700, okay? We're not going to be wrapping at all. We're going to be putting the uh, rub on heavy, uh, and we're going to be going for a real good bark today, okay? So we'll see if uh, we can keep some moisture in our pork butt and come up with a real fantastic coffee-infused flavored uh, bark-like crust, okay? So, hey, let's go ahead and get started. One, two. All right, guys, so we're going to go ahead and get started here. So here's our pork but here, and like I told you before, if you can, you can see it's been uh, cut open and the bone has been removed. Okay, we're not going to do uh, hardly any trimming on it because it's been trimmed up pretty good. It's got a little bit of fat on the bottom of it, but I'll leave that on there, kind of as a protection for the pork butt. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we normally use olive oil or mustard as a binder. Okay, but since we have this coffee thing going here, we are going to be using a uh, cold cup of coffee. Uh, for our for our binder, okay, and uh, we're just gonna pour this all over the pork butt just to kind of give the rub something to hold on to and to continue to kind of infuse that coffee flavor into the meat, okay? All right, that's good. Now the coffee rub that I'm using here is. Uh, the original recipe came from Hay Grill Hay, and I'll put the link down in the description box. But uh, we added uh, one additional thing to this for a pork process, okay? So this has uh, instant coffee in it. It has kosher salt. It has black pepper, coriander, garlic powder, onion powder. It has paprika in it, has some cayenne pepper in it, and we added the brown sugar, okay? Uh, for me, the original recipe was a little bitter on the uh, all over, so uh, when we added the brown sugar, there's a little bit of bite on the back end of the coffee flavor, but for the most part, uh, it tastes pretty good, okay? Also, if you make a coffee rub, make sure that you use an instant coffee. Uh, even if you take coffee beans and finally grind them, you're going to wind up with uh, coffee grounds uh, still existing on your meat and in your mouth when you eat it. So it'll give you this grimy, gritty type texture, okay? Whereas instant coffee will uh, dissolve with the uh, liquids uh, and the juices that are being permeated from the meat uh, and from the uh, from our binder here. So it will uh, incorporate better within your uh, meat and give you a better uh, texture and you won't uh, be spitting out coffee grounds uh, later on when you try to eat this. Okay, so uh, But let's go ahead and layer this on I'll start from the inside And, that, and that's the good thing about it being um, filleted or cut open is that uh, I can get some of the rub on the interior of the pork butt Okay, like so. And then we're going to go ahead and hit it heavy. All right. So, so yes, today is my birthday. I took, today is Thursday. So, um, I was not able to go home because of COVID. Um, I normally like to go home and spend my birthday with my brother and my family and friends. Um, you know, but unfortunately with the COVID thing going on, we didn't want to travel and take the chance. Uh, or we would either hang out with my son out in Austin, Texas. Um, but 
we'll just have to make plans to do it do it next year sometime okay so it's a little depressing spending your birthday without your normal crowd like I said my brother and my son uh and those folks there but the wife has uh went out of her way to make the birthday as special as she could so i really love her for that so thank you very much my dear so all right so we got a heavy coat Ooh, that smells good. We got a heavy coat of this coffee rub on our pork butt. So we're going to let it sit here for a few minutes and get happy while we go out and turn on the Rectech. So like I said, we're cooking on the Rectech 700 today, and we're going to be cooking at 235 degrees today. We're going to be cooking to an internal temperature of 203 degrees. And like I said, we're not wrapping it at all. We don't want to ruin our bark. We're going to see just how well the Rectech 700 puts a bark on this pork butt. So hey, let's head out to the deck and let's get the old rec tech fired up. All right, guys, so we're done with our cook. This is actually the next day because the uh, pork butt uh, not being wrapped hit a stall point and was on the rec tech for several hours. And so the total cook time unwrapped was six hours and 19 minutes, okay? Um, so we pulled it off last night. Uh, we wrapped it up in some foil and we put it in a small uh, cooler on the counter overnight, okay? I got up this morning. I threw it in the oven to reheat it to about 170, 175 degrees until my uh, temperature probe could go in like butter. I pulled it out and then we pulled it. It has, has some fantastic bark on it. As you can see here, it has some great, uh, a great smoke ring on it too. So we're going to go ahead and finish it off now. We'll do the final taste test and uh, we'll sh uh, tell you exactly how this whole thing turned out. All right, we're gonna go ahead and take our foil off here. Which was keeping it warm. Oh, as you can see, it's got some great bark on it, uh, some great color, okay? So we're gonna finish it off now. So we're gonna hit it just lightly one more time with our rub, just to reinforce those flavors. Okay? And now we're gonna hit it with some sauce. Now I'm not normally a big sauce uh, person unless we're doing pulled pork and what this is this is some leftover sauce that we did from a previous cook I haven't released that video yet but what this is this was one cup of your favorite barbecue sauce in this instant we're using sweet baby rays and it was one cup of uh, brewed coffee okay we mixed the two together heated it up and so the barbecue sauce also has a a coffee infusion or coffee flavor to it as well as our rub okay so let me get this off of here and we're going to lightly hit our pulled pork now oh, that looks good all right let's go ahead and mix it up we just want a light coating of sauce too much sauce will kind of ruin your bark okay And that's it. You, know, you can smell the coffee from the rub and from the barbecue sauce, so it smells fantastic. All right, let's have a taste test. Oh. 
Oh yeah, this is really, really good. I love the coffee infusion all through the, um, the pulled pork. It's got a nice little uh, kick of heat from the cayenne pepper that was in the rub and the little brown sugar sweetness uh, of it between the Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce and the brown sugar even out the bitterness that you would get from the coffee, okay? The only thing I would do a little bit uh, different is I would like a little bit more heat. So I may sprinkle this with a little bit more cayenne pepper or use a little Reaper rub uh, from Frag Out Flavor to really kick the heat up a little bit, okay? But other than that, this is fantastic. It's gonna make some great uh, pulled pork nachos or some pulled pork sandwiches so put a little coleslaw on it and go to town okay mm. and the bark is fantastic so so there's something to be said for cooking a pork butt without wrapping it because it preserves the firmness and the crispness of your bark normally when you wrap a pork butt the bark will soften you lose a lot of your bark but this if you can wait because wrapping it normally gets it over the stall point faster but if you have time, if you can wait, the rewards are well worth it to get some fantastic bark, okay? Man, mm. yeah, that's really, really good. So, okay, so I'll put the recipe for the rub and the sauce down in the description block. And so you guys can check it out if you want to. And uh, that's about it. So I want to thank the folks uh, at Rec Tech Grills. Uh, for the Rectech 700, fantastic cooker. Love that pellet smoker. If you're interested in getting one, check out the guys at rectechgrills.com. They got some fantastic products out there, uh, including a uh, Santa Marie style cooker called the Wild, okay? Hopefully I can get my hands on one of those sometimes this year. And of course they got the Matador and several, several other cooking devices. So check them out. Uh, they have some really good customer service, okay? Also, I want to thank the folks at uh, Smartro. Uh, that's the uh, thermometer that we used here. Now, this is a cool little thermometer. It lit up at night, it has two probes on it, and uh, it did a really good job. The only drawback to this one here versus some of the other ones is that, uh, to my knowledge, uh, it doesn't send a signal to your phone or anything to tell you what the temperature is while you're cooking. Whereas the probe on the Rectech would have sent the signal to your Rectech software, or if you had used a Maverick, the Maverick has the other uh, thermometer probe or the, the display device that you can take around with you and monitor the temperatures while you're doing whatever you need to do. But the Smartro is a nice little um, thermometer. It has magnet, magnets on the back where you can hook it up against uh, your cooker, uh, as long as you hook it in a hot spot, because we did. And, kind of melted the back a little bit so be careful on that so but i want to thank that if you're interested in that i'll put a link of the smart tro thermometer and you guys can check that out too well that's all we have time for today uh, like we always say where there's smoke there's fire if it's fire then damn it there just might be a barbecue there or somebody throwing a cup of java in your pool pork hey as always hey we'll see you guys around the smoker